So, do you know, one of the things that is very common amongst any entrepreneur that I speak to is that they say, I'm very independent. So they want autonomy, they're very independent. That, and that was me. I'm a highly independent. I've been independent since I was a little tiny tot. But the overdone strength of independence is they find it very ask, hard to ask for help. And so that was very much me. And because when I started my first business, it, when I was 33, I, I was started a business, a social network for business owners four years before LinkedIn, and it went global very quickly and put me on a centre stage faster than I was probably capable of coping with myself. And because I was the servant leader and the supporter to hundreds and thousands of business owners, the last thing I felt I could do was show any vulnerability. So asking for help was something I really struggled to do. Um, fortunately, my soulmate, my husband and I were in it together so we could support each other. Um, but I, I have to say, I, I, for the wrong reasons, I didn't ask for help. I didn't reach out. <clears throat> but also, I think a lot of, I was struggling to find a role model that I felt I wanted to ask to help and guide me. And I think this subject of mentoring, I think you have to be very careful how you choose that mentor. Because when you have a mentor, they're giving you their opinions, their life journey, their skills. Um, and I just couldn't find at the time somebody that I felt had the same values, had the same conflict of my values towards being a mummy as well as find building this global business that I was building. And that's probably another reason why I never really asked for some help, because I was struggling. I remember Anita Roderick, Body Shop, I admired her hugely. Unfortunately, she passed away. Um, I don't know whether she would have mentored me anyway, but it was hard to find role models, uh, uh, female role models I found very hard to find. And the media just depicts these aggressive, hard-hitting, Dragon's Den, Alan Sugar, Apprentice style of communication, and that's not what what is me. And so, you know, if I, in my own hopefully un-egotistical way, could be a, a fairly balanced role model to other people, that would make me very happy, not because I'm trying to fulfil some need for validation in that way, but I don't think that there have been many women that are very comfortable in their skin about their values around family as well as work and understand the juggle of that. Um, so sadly in my 20s when I was employed I did experience har harassment f from a particular man and had to leave a company so I'm not alone in that. I know that there are a terrible number of women that have experienced that. Um, I was in the IT sector and there weren't many men in the IT sector. On the whole, my first boss was fantastic when I was 19 and he very much celebrated that I lead emotionally. I'm a very emotionally driven person. I think I rely more on my emotional intelligence than my intelligence. And um, he did celebrate that in me. So I've had some really fantastic support, male support as well. <coughs> in the 80s also... A lot of the women believed that to be successful in a male-driven economy, they had to be very testosterone-driven. And I found that a great shame because I found them scarier than the men. And that was a big challenge to me. And I had a few female bosses that um, happily, I think that attitude is dwindling now. But that was definitely a challenge for me because in a way, when I considered being a leader in business myself, that's not the sort of woman, woman I wanted to be. Um, and, but then when I stopped working formally at 28 to have Hannah, my first child, um, I had a chance to step back and really assess my own values and consider, you know, what did I want my life to be now as a mother? And so when I started Academy when I was 33, it was completely driven by my values of friendship, of love, of support, of belonging, of togetherness, and it worked really well, but the next challenge around that was that I was building a community, and it was the only social net for network for business at the time. The, the mass of people in business weren't ready for that, and so when LinkedIn came in, 
not only were they $330 million richer than me in funding, um, they also appealed to the people who said, this is what I am, and I'm not sharing who I am. And therefore, whereas we were saying this is about you building trust through who you are and what you are is your skills and build recognition and, and so, sort of become a brand around that. But it took time for people to build their brand like that. And then LinkedIn came in and it seemed a much easier way of hiding and just being business. And then Facebook came in and it allowed you to really say, well, who I am is on Facebook and what I am is on LinkedIn. And we were the blend of that. So the next challenge for me was how do I keep a business going where the majority of the world doesn't necessarily believe in what I believe in. And I think if we started Academy now... And we're able to raise the finance for it. I think it would be a different journey for us. But we had a very tough 14-year journey, um, which culminated in us having to um, close the business down, really. We had a buyer who bought it but didn't do anything properly with it. And uh, it was a great sadness. And I think the next challenge for us, when anybody who's lost a business, they will understand they lose their identity. Because you, we were so identified globally by that business... Um, and, you know, on big world stages, I was being introduced as the most connected person in the world. And then I, became, I remember about a year later being at a Chamber of Commerce event in Farnham, where I live, and I was introduced as the most connected person in Farnham. And it's like I'd gone from the world to 22 million people, 22,000 people in Farnham. And, you know, that, that really does attack your self-worth. And... Um, so that was another challenge for me. How do you build my self-worth again after I had such a quite public loss of a business? Mm -hmm.